And now Alphabet's up, NVIDIA flat this week as investors latch on to the idea that it's not just Google's AI models catching up, but it's AI chips too. That coming after a report that Google might sell its specialized AI chips, TPUs, to Meta for its AI needs, but there might be a lot less to this Google chip deal than meets the eye if it happens. For more, let's bring in Ben Beharin, CEO of Creative Strategies. Hey, Ben, good to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Google's chips are potentially useful to Meta because they could be customized for massive AI tasks in a specific cloud, like, say, video recommendations and reels, say. But most companies don't have AI needs at that scale, and they want to work across multiple different clouds. So is Google really competing with NVIDIA? Yeah, I mean, I would say no. I mean, I think we got to remember, right, the first customer for TPUs is primarily Google, right? They've built those for their services, um, everything from YouTube to Search to Gemini, as we see today, and, and it runs very, very well on that um, as a specialized platform. And you're right, Meta, maybe a couple of other names. You're seeing this around Anthropic, Anthropic right, Who, uh, who who's going to do a deal and, and, and is trained and run on TPUs. But really, the architecture or the architectural compatibility with GPU is much more programmable, much more flexible across the stack is still why we see a lot of public workloads, so, so third-party customers' workloads. And remember, right, uh, Google in GCP has a lot of NVIDIA as well that they mm -hmm. will continue to need to offer their customers. So really not competitive in the chip sense, but obviously, right, they are running a whole host of software on their own chips, and that's, you know, worth noting for what it is. Here's my metaphor that I want to run by you, since we were making bull puns earlier. It's like if Google's supplying a specially raised beef cow to McDonald's for the quarter pounder, you know, and McDonald's has its own ranches because it sells billions of burgers. That doesn't mean steakhouses and everybody else is going to buy the same cow because they want to have different options, local butchers that they're going to buy from, or at least a standard type of beef. And that's more what NVIDIA sells, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, again, right, just the general purpose natures of GPUs in this, I think, just lend themselves to architectural compatibility across clouds, right? And, and don't, you know, forget, right, NVIDIA has the largest install base by a large factor of GPUs. This matters, right, to software developers. So, mm -hmm. so you're absolutely right. The specialized nature of things like TPUs or other custom ASICs are great when that software is highly optimized for it. And that's why you see first parties use it more than third parties. And the question will be, will third parties in public cloud start to adopt these more than they do in video GPUs? And that's not a dynamic we see today. Now, at the same time, this does fall into the same bucket as Amazon AWS having its Tranium and Inferentia chips. Inferentia much more relevant now that there are more inference workloads running on these models that have already been trained and figured out. How are you modeling how much those cloud providers are going to save in AI from their own chips and how much market share that's going to keep away from NVIDIA? Yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to how much of their own workloads they'll optimize. I mean, I, the way I look at this, too, is Google is the most successful at this custom ASIC strategy when it comes to an AI accelerator. I think what Tranium has done, and to some degree in Frenchia, but I think this aligns around Tranium as a multi-purpose chip going forward, has been great, but again, failed to, op to, to acquire third-party customers, which is what you need, right, at scale. So there's a lot of reasons why this makes sense hmm. to run your workloads on. How much that takes away from NVIDIA, I'm not sure. But at the end of the day, right, we're in what I'm now calling a gigacycle of this industry, one of the largest dollar TAM expansions we've ever seen. There's so much money to go around, if you believe numbers like $700 billion or a trillion dollars right. in 2030. And right now, it seems like NVIDIA is going to have the vast majority of that. So, Ben, is there, is there an, an VMware type play that's going to emerge across these different clouds. Once we have, you know, Rainier on uh, AWS, that's maybe specifically good at Anthropic, but you also want to run Anthropic somewhere else. Does there need to be an AI middleware type layer so that you can actually get the financial benefit of efficiency on a given cloud, but also get the programming benefit of not having to write special to each one? Yeah, absolutely. And I do think a lot of people talk about this, especially if you talk to all of the cloud vendors, right? They're trying to say, we want to optimize this stack so you don't have to make this massive lift and shift for your software. You can just run it wherever you want. That's just not where we are today. But 100%, especially because I think multi-cloud, multi-AI cloud deployments are going to be a thing across enterprises, meaning that they're going to want to put portions of those workloads everywhere. They don't want to custom tune all these things. They want one standard 
programming language or one optimization set and then have the options to run that, whatever is best for them, whether that's speed or economics or performance or something like that. So mm. I think someday we'll get there, but we're still what feels like a long way off from that reality.